I did want to talk a little bit about the XG24, the device itself. You know, this is our really our highest performance uh, wireless SOC for the edge of the IoT network. And we have two devices in this. We've got the BG24 and the MG24, and I'll talk more about those. But before I go into the specific features, you know, really want to talk a little bit about where are these targeted? Um, you know, obviously where we see this is smart home is one of the big areas, whether it be gateways um, or really truly the edge of the network for things like sensors, switches, door locks, and smart plugs. In building automation, you have a lot of the similar applications you see in the home, but it also extends beyond that. For example, one of the things you'll start to see is location services with uh, angle of arrival, angle of departure. And then um, one of the big markets, we continue to see a lot of, uh, you know, control for smart home or building is LEDs. LEDs typically you'll see in a smart home where you have a connected LED or luminaires for commercial uh, lighting. There are also some unique features on this device that sort of address some additional markets. For example, we do have a 20-bit ADC on this, and I'll talk more about that, but it's capable of 16 bits of eNOB. And that's great for applications in the medical uh, area, portable medical devices, for example, blood glucose meters. Um, it's also good for devices in the smart home. For example, we talked about smart plugs briefly. Um, you know, smart plugs with this 20-bit ADC, you can get very high resolution and accuracy on things like current measurements. So, you know, the smart plug could actually be reading current measurements and reporting that. And then one of the things that's new is that we do have an AI ML acceleration sensor. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a slide, but this is ideal for really starting to do um, intelligent machine learning at the edge where I don't need to be connected to the cloud. And then I'll talk more about the benefits of that. But the fact that we have this acceleration sensor on reduces current um, and does faster inferencing. So let's sort of talk a little bit about the BG24 and MG24. These are optimized for battery powered IoT mesh devices. So we'll talk more about that in a second, but you know, this continues with really Silicon Labs, high performance radios. We have a history of this. Um, this device has a link budget of about 124. Um, so what that means is, you know, I get very long communication range, but in mesh networkings, uh, also means I get very reliable communication. Um, so, you know, this device is capable of running up to plus 19.5 dBm output power. And for example, on uh, 802.15.4, which is popular for Thread and Zigbee, uh, we can get minus 104.5 sensitivity. So that is class leading on an SOC without the need to install or have an additional fan front end module. So really it allows uh, developers to have better R performance with less component count and less ICs. The other thing we've done in this device is we've improved on a couple of areas, what we're gonna call Wi-Fi coexistence and antenna diversity. So what we have here is, you know, coexistence, when you're talking about gateways, I'm gonna have uh, this device, which is 2.4 gigahertz. I'll have it in a gateway that also has uh, Wi-Fi, so 2.4 gigahertz, and there may be additional radios, BLE, for example. We have the ability through both unmanaged and managed to really handle interference from those different 2.4 gigahertz radios. And we've done a lot of work in this area um, and it's something that we have continue to prove on with this device. And then for RX antenna diversity, this is where I have multiple antennas and I'm trying to reduce the impact of multipath. We see this mostly in commercial environments where they really need the best RF performance. Again, we've done excellent um, implementation here where with 802.15.4, we can support what's called select best. So that means I will search during a preamble, I'll look at one sing antenna then the other antenna and I'll choose the best one. So it's really all about providing reliable communications uh, for the end user. And then from a, a processing standpoint, this does have an ARM Cortex M33. It's capable of running up to 2x the HFXO. In this case, the default HFXO on this device is a 39 megahertz device. So you can run 78 megahertz. It supports things like trust zone, and it does have a significant amount of flash and RAM. And this is the highest one we have in our portfolio with 1.5 mega flash and 256 K of RAM. 
Hey, Matt, uh, I would like to interject here uh, real quick. So I have several customers that have been asking me, hey, I've been using the BG22 and I need a, a bigger option with more RAM, more flash. So the BG24 or the MG24 is a great choice for that because it gives you ample flashing RAM to tackle your application, especially RAM uh, was something that was sort of limiting on the 22. So now if you have an RTOS or if you have any systems where you need a bigger buffer to handle all kinds of like different types of data, the, the 24 is a, is a great option as a replacement or as a big brother to the 22. Absolutely. And that brings a good point up, you know, obviously this is up to, we will have uh, parts that have different amounts of flash and RAM as well. So you don't have to go all the way up to, you know, 1.5 mega flash. We'll have one with 1024 and 128. So you can sort of find the sweet spot for your application. And of course, this really is optimized for low power. Um, you know, if you look at, this is part of our series two. And if you look at this compared to our previous generations, uh, this is about half the current consumption to that device. So it's really about extending the battery life. We have very good active current in both transmit and receive, as well as active MCU current. And then, you know, we're down to about 1.3 microamps in, in our, what we call our sleep mode, our EM2 mode. So excellent uh, current consumption, very low power, really extends the battery life of these devices. The other thing that this device has, and, and several of our Series 2 has this, is we have a dedicated security core, our secure uh, engine, that we call Secure Vault. And this is really, this is more than just hardware, it's hardware, software, et cetera. But in here, we have hardware that handles a lot of the security aspects, whether it be encryption, tamper detect, et cetera. And I'll talk more about that, but that's critical as we start to, you know, get into situations where security and, you know, is more important in these IoT devices, not only from an end user perspective, ensuring that you're protecting uh, what they have, but also they're starting to see regula regulations that is driving for more advanced security on these devices. And then again, I did mention the AI ML. Um, I'll go into more details on that, but we do have a, a processor on here that's really offloading sort of the computation required for machine learning. And then, you know, it does have a number of low power peripherals. You know, we have multiple serial devices. We have what we call an uh, enhanced USART. So USART basically is a device that allows you to support UART or SPI. Um, and then we have an enhanced USART that provides higher throughput on things like SPI, as well as low power capabilities. So a lot of our peripherals are actually able to run down into sleep mode. And that's important because if you're doing something, you don't want to wake up the host for every transaction unless it's necessary. So the fact that we have these low power peripherals that can run in EM2 mode um, lowers the total systems uh, current consumption. And then of course, I'm excited about the 20-bit ADC. This is the first class of device, you know, with a wireless SOC at the edge that has a 20-bit ADC in here. And I'll talk more about that in a slide in a minute, but what it really does is it enables new use cases. So for example, um, we have customers that we've been engaged with early and they're either taking this device and eliminating a dedicated uh, external ADC or, they're actually finding new use cases because of what they could do with this device. So they're actually enabling some features that they haven't before because of the capability and the fact that it is integrated. And then there is a temperature sensor that's capable of a calibration of 1.5 degrees C of accuracy. And of course, you know, we did talk about mesh networking. There's two devices here. Uh, the BG24 is really targeted towards Bluetooth. So it's, you know, Bluetooth and Bluetooth mesh. It supports up to 5.3, so I have one megabit, two megabit, as well as long range. And I can also support, you know, things like angle of arrival, angle of detection. The MG24 is our superset device, so it can really support all the protocols. So obviously one of the big ones, this device is really Matter ready. Our customers that are going through uh, with doing developing early with Matter, this is the device of choice. Um, support open thread, obviously, uh, Zigbee, as well as dynamic multi-protocol. For example, one of the areas I see is you'll see a lot of devices out there that can support both Zigbee and Bluetooth. And this is popular in, for example, lighting. You know, as, it, as an end user, they don't always know what network they have. So with multi-protocol, 
as an OEM, I can develop a, a light bulb that has both Zigbee and Bluetooth. A user buys it, brings it home. If they don't have Zigbee, they control it through their phone via Bluetooth. Or if they do have Zigbee, um, then it can join the Zigbee network. And then finally, um, <clears throat> we have, we've announced the devices for the SOCs and the ICs. We'll be launching those for availability in April. And then second half of this year, we're going to introduce modules. We have what we call a system and package, which is a very small module, uh, seven by seven. It's got all the integration in it, the passives, even the antenna in the device. So it's very nice if you have a very um, space constrained application. And then we have standard PCB modules as well. Modules are really nice if you don't have the expertise for wireless or you're just looking for faster time to market, uh, the module is the way to go. So from a silicon standpoint, um, you know, I did mention the AIML. Really, this is about doing uh, AIML at the edge device. So I don't need a, a connection to the network. The benefits of that is it is lower power because I'm not transmitting and receiving data as I'm going across sending the data up the network. Obviously, I'm not using network bandwidth. And there is lower latency because I'm, you know, I'm doing things locally instead of sending them out, having them on the cloud, and then getting it back. It also provides um, you know, privacy to the fact, again, I'm not sending that data over the network as well as higher security, and we do that at a lower cost. So with this AI ML accelerator, we can actually do uh, what you call inferencing, which is basically you know, making the decision on what's, what you're deciding um, up to four times faster and at 6x lower current consumption. So that's, again, critical for these edge devices that are probably going to be battery powered that need, need to make decisions. So some popular things we're seeing for this, obviously predictive maintenance has been going on for a while. For example, you have conveyor belts that have motors on them. They'll look for things like vibration, et cetera, determine uh, early failures. So you don't actually have a failure on the line. You could actually take it down when needed versus having uh, to react to a failure. The other thing you'll start to see with this, for example, is glass breakage sensors. And we actually uh, have this where we could actually detect glass breakage um, over audio. So a lot of this uh, will start to come out. This is becoming more and more uh, new for the market. And we'll start starting to see this more at really sensor networks along the edge. All right, so Jake, one of the other interesting things about this release is that we're actually announcing hardware and software simultaneously. And which is great to see, it, it is the heartbeat of who we are as a company going forward. What, what is, from a development perspective and from an announcement perspective, what's so cool about that from the customer perspective when they see this? Two big things. One is, you know, the vast majority of our customers are experts in their particular application areas, but they really look to us to be experts in, in connectivity and making that connectivity work. So, uh, you know, we're recognized for, and we've got things to improve, but we're recognized for how robust our tools are. And when you think about adding things in like AI and uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, the, the tools that we're enabling with that bolted on to our, our existing wireless tools, make it a super powerful combination to enable our customers to add even more capability coupled with really strong ease of use that we're constantly getting better and improving on. So, I mean, it ultimately it gets us to solutions and the more that we can tout solutions, that's how our customers see us, that it, it the better it does in terms of their perception of us and how we do.